you'll find that at the beginning of all of your anatomy and physiology based courses, they'll start off by talking about some chemistry and predominantly clinically relevant chemistry. And one of the things in which you'll have to learn is something called diffusion. Now, the reason why you need to understand diffusion is because this is the way that all the useful molecules get into our body and get distributed throughout our body. And it's also the way in which the waste products or the metabolic byproducts that need to get out of the body are removed. So it's also the way in which drugs can be delivered to various aspects of the body as well. So understanding diffusion is very, very important. So what we need to first do is define what diffusion actually is. And I've written the de uh, definition up here. Diffusion is the passive movement of particles from an area of high particle concentration to an area of low particle concentration. So let's break that up. Firstly, it's a passive movement. Now when something moves passively, that means it does not require any energy. And remember, energy, when we're talking about biology, comes in the form of ATP, adenosine triphosphate. So adenosine triphosphate, three phosphate molecules. When you snap off one of those phosphate molecules, energy is released and some sort of work occurs. That's how ATP is used to create energy, or actually how ATP is used for some sort of work to occur. Now, diffusion doesn't need ATP, it's passive. So if you have a look, it's when particles or molecules, so this could be oxygen, this could be glucose, this could be um, nitrogen, this could be any, basically any particles or molecules, whether it be gas or not gas, particles move from an area of a high particle concentration down a concentration gradient to an area of low concentration. Let me give you a visual example. If I were to get a container of water and we were to drop a sugar cube into that water, that sugar cube contains a high concentration. It's basically just glucose. Glucose shoved in all together. So it's an area of high glucose concentration. Now, given sufficient time, what will happen? Well, those glucose molecules will start to move around. Now, you need to remember that atoms, all the atoms in our universe are moving. That includes the atoms in your body, that includes the atoms in the chair, the atoms in the roof, the atoms in your dog, they're all moving. Now the degree in which they move determines what type of physical properties they undertake. For example, when they're moving very slowly and not very far, they usually take the form of a solid. When they move a little bit further and a little bit faster, they often take the properties of a liquid. And when they move even faster still, they can take the properties of a gas because they escape. So think about water in that case, or think about water molecules. When they're moving very slowly, they form ice. So when they move slowly, it's cold because temperature comes from that movement and it's a solid object. Then when you heat up ice, what happens? That water, those water molecules move faster and a wider distance, and then it becomes a liquid. And then when you add even more temperature, the water molecules start to move faster still, and they escape, and that's the gas, okay? Water vapor. So when you put this, these glucose molecules in, they are moving, but they're a solid, so they're moving not that much. But when you put it into a solution such, or a solvent such as water, they start to dissolve, and the particles begin to escape. And as those particles begin to escape, they randomly disperse throughout the solution until, given sufficient amount of time, that area of high concentration that you originally had, the particles moved away to areas of low concentration until there's an, an area of even distribution of those particles. So what you find is that a high concentration moves to an area of low concentration until there's some form of equilibrium. So that's what you need to think about. The universe basically wants to maintain some form of equilibrium. Now, if I just wipe this out very quickly. Let me give you another example. If I were to take 
all the students in my class, let's say I have 50 students and we're in a, cl <coughs> in a classroom and I get them all to come out the front in a group and I blindfold all of them. So they can't see and they're pulled up into a group, shoulder to shoulder, okay? And then I say, all right, I'm going to, when I say go, what I want you to do is I want you to move in one direction, move forward and when you hit something, bounce off in the opposite direction and do that for 30 seconds. What will you find? You'll find that over 30 seconds, if I say stop after 30 seconds and get them to take their blindfolds off, they will have moved from the area of high concentration to the area of low concentration randomly. And you'll probably find that they'll be quite evenly dispersed. Even though none of them could speak to one another, nor could they see where they were going, nor did they know where they were going, they all ended up being quite randomly distributed. That is diffusion. Now, with diffusion, because it's passive, passive movement will always go from an area of high concentration down a gradient to the area of low concentration until it's balanced out. The way I remember this is if this was a slide. Now, what do you have with a slide? You've got the ladder that allows you to get up the slide and then the slide going down. So when you're at the top of the slide, at the high concentration, what do you need to do to get down to the low concentration? Nothing. You let go. So it costs you no energy to go from a high down to a low. So no ATP, it's passive movement. But what if you want to go from a low concentration area up to a high concentration area? You need to climb that ladder. And climbing that ladder costs energy in the form of ATP and that is what we call active transport. Now, diffusion is not active. Diffusion is passive and diffusion is the movement of particles from an area of high particle concentration to its area of low par particle concentration to try and balance out that concentration gradient. I hope that makes sense. The next video I'll start talking about osmosis.